La verità è che non ci siamo mai fermati. Proprio quando il tempo sembrava immobile, il pensiero si è mosso in un modo diverso. In quell'istante è cambiato tutto. Abbiamo costruito qualcosa che fosse solido abbastanza da sostenere quella leggerezza. Abbiamo trovato il nostro tempo. Chi veloce, chi lento. Un tempo umano. Un tempo nuovo. Per chi si conosce. Per chi dà una mano. Per chi studia. Per chi lavora. Chi ha bisogno di staccare? Per tutti noi. Il treno è sempre il treno. Immagina un mondo migliore, un mondo dove le auto emettono solo acqua, un mondo senza più incidenti, un mondo dove zero è solo l'inizio. Immagina un mondo beyond zero. Quella per farti spazio in città. What's next? Per quando a cambiare il tuo lavoro. What's next? O semplicemente per guardare avanti. What's next? Vai su lisplan.com e scopri il noleggio a lungo termine più adatto a te. Lisplan. What's next? civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Buon pomeriggio e benvenuti a questo. Good afternoon and welcome to this event, Mare Nostrum, the Mediterranean, a new hub. This is a, a topic that has a long history behind it, but today requires us to rethink about it. Italy has a geographical position that is unique. It's a platform within the Mediterranean, and it's always been a connection point and a bridge between different cultures. It's, this has always been the case since the Romans with Mare Nostrum, but it can be 
the same today, and this is what we would like to talk about. We want to try and understand whether we can play an uh, even more crucial role in terms of connections, not just in Europe, but also globally. And I'm referring to the flows of goods and people. Today, we have a very highly qualified panel of speakers. We have the Minister for Infrastructure and Sustainable Mobility, Enrico Giovannini. We thank him very much for his presence. And uh, um, today, we will deal with this uh, issue, uh, hearing uh, the opinion of Andrea Agostinelli, the President of the Authority of the Port System of the Mediterranean, Tyrrhenium Sea, and Ionian Sea. Uh, Gian Piero Striguglio, Managing Director of Merci Italia, the Logistics Hub for Transport of Goods and Services of the uh, National Railway System. And then uh, Luigi Luca, who's connected uh, online. He's Managing Director of Toyota Motor Italia, Italy. So a producer of vehicles. And then uh, Alberto Viano, managing director of Lease Plan, a company providing global services connected to uh, mobility. Thank you very much for being here with us. So we decided to do things a bit differently. So we will have a first speech by the minister, and then there will be some time for the four uh, speeches by the other guests, and then a final comments by the minister. Minister, please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for this uh, new invitation to be with you today to take part in such uh, an important event. The word Mediterranean it means sea between lands. So it is something that makes us think of the fact that the sea does not exist in isolation. The Mediterranean Sea is alive because it is placed within a specific environment surrounded by many different uh, territories. And I'm saying this because during this uh, electoral campaign and in the previous months, someone was calling for the creation of the Ministry of the Sea, as if the sea could be detached from uh, the um, inland areas. So I would like to start by asking uh, has the Mediterranean Sea a value in itself, or is its cultural, political, economic value um, related to the evolution of the people that face the Mediterranean, that live in areas facing the Mediterranean? I think it's very important to have a clear idea of how societies are organized nowadays, because from Spain, to Croatia, and then moving to Greece, and then Italy, of course, and Cyprus. We are talking about European Union countries. So all these uh, northern area and the eastern, partially eastern area of the Mediterranean is countries of the Mediterranean, of the European Union. Then we have uh, Israel, Syria, Lebanon, and then we have North African countries, Turkey, so I think it's very important to start from here because it's important to understand that Italy uh, has no meaning, let's say, by itself. Its value is linked to its uh, connection. It's being part of the European Union. So how is Italy connected to the rest of the European Union? because this uh, function of bridge or connection can be done also only if there are other subjects to connect. So in the south, we have the so-called chaos land. 
And this is linked to the issue of climate change because all the equatorial area is being subject to climate change, a change that is even more dramatic than what we are experiencing. And it's very important that we bear this in mind because the sea is not just a place uh, where uh, ships uh, travel. The sea has its own value and uh, we have forgotten its value and neglected the sea for too long. So I'd like to um, emphasize this point because I, I see people from the uh, sea authorities uh, and one of their responsibilities is safeguarding the quality of the sea. And I think it's very important that we bear this in mind because life in the Mediterranean in terms of sea life is essential and uh, it helps us understand what happens in the populations that live on the Mediterranean Sea. So why did I start from the climate change? I did so because a year, according to some experts, a year ago the Mediterranean was at risk of being significantly uh, modified because of the melting of the ice cap that uh, allows ships uh, to circumnavigate Russia and get to northern Europe rather than going through Suez. And this idea clearly tells us how uncertain our future is. So we cannot simply think about Italy as a logistic platform where uh, goods arrive because climate change could uh, uh, overturn all our uh, plans. So in the last uh, 18 months, uh, we've been thinking about this. So during the design of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, we've imagined Italy not just as a place where goods arrive, but also as a place where goods are transformed and uh, uh, from where goods depart. And this uh, requires total change of outlook. So we are here with a representative from the ports authorities, including Gioia Tauro as a port. Gioia Tauro is the most important European port in the so-called trans-shipping activities. So we have uh, mega ships uh, 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 with containers with, of goods. And in Gioia Tauro, all those goods are distributed from Gioia Tauro to all over the Mediterranean area. And I'm saying this because I want to go beyond stereotypes. We cannot think that goods reach Sicily or Gioia Tauro and then travel by train throughout Italy and then move to Germany or Central European countries. Uh, the um, transport of containers could reach Genoa, for example. Uh, a ship could uh, uh, hold many trains. 100 trains could be uh, loaded onto one uh, carrier ship. And I'm saying this because we need to plan the mobility system. And this is a very complex activity. So in the last 18 months, we tried to do something about it. Today, we're not here to talk about logistics as one of the main characteristics of the logistics hub. Because someone I remember once said, do we really want to live on a logistic platform? 
So if we were just a logistic platform where that goods reach to go elsewhere, doesn't really leave much value into the, that platform. So we developed a plan for ports, for example, for the interconnection of ports, airports, intermodal centers, and so on. So uh, naval giants uh, will not disappear. Giant ships will not disappear. That means that piers will have to become longer and longer. Services will have to be more and more advanced. And so it's not something that can be done uh, in any place, in any, at any port. So it's important that we have ports specialized. Second point, we don't want to be simply be uh, a place where uh, goods just go through. We want to attract companies so that they will use the hinterland to for their production activities, manufacturing activities. So we need uh, to have specialized uh, area so that uh, manufacturing and production will not only happen in the Po Valley. Third point, we cannot think of ports as separated uh, from uh, uh, airports and railways. So intermodality is uh, essential. And this applies to South North corridors or uh, the transit uh, from Genoa Sport uh, through railways rather than trucks, avoiding and uh, reducing pollution, truck-related pollution, but also on the east-west corridor. So if you think about Italy, we should complete the T of the um, high-speed train system. So we must go beyond Salerno, we must reach Reggio Calabria, and then the horizontal areas, Naples, Bari, Rome, Pescara, Orte Falconara, and then from Battipaglia towards Taranto. So we need to create a real network of freight and passengers, an interconnected network so that it will be possible to attract new types of tourists, new types of manufacturing activities. In order to do all of this, we require three main ingredients. And in the last 18 months, we've worked very hard to obtain them. You can check the infrastructure attachment, the infrastructure mobility attachment in the economic and finance document. So first point, investments. Our ministry uh, accounts for 61 billions of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, but that's not enough. There will be an additional 50 billions from the Development and Cohesion Fund, 80 million from the ordinary European funds, funds for cohesion, the standard cohesion funds. So 130 million total that will be allocated in the next year, more or less. And this is a great opportunity for us to build what we haven't been able to finance yet, but that will depend on regions. So regions will have the opportunity of receiving additional financing and uh, they may distribute them very in a very general way or focus on the strengthening of some areas, creating a, a triggering effect. Second point, planning. In the last 18 months, uh, we have developed the five year, a five-year plan for uh, railways, roads uh, and highways, uh, 
cycling uh, planes. Uh, we've uh, worked on the maritime uh, areas, uh, maybe to create uh, wind farms, offshore wind farms. Then we've worked on the airport plan. The idea is that by the end of our term, we will be able to give the country all these different plans that will be the starting point of a process that's been uh, we've been waiting for for 11 years so a general plan for logistics and transport and we can see that we've been waiting for this for long and then uh, the last point is reforms with the presidents of the port authorities, we have carried out some reforms in the area, trying to clarify who's responsible for the development of the port, whether it's the municipality, the port authority, the region, um, and with the railway companies, we signed a five-year plan in just seven months, rather than two or three years, for example. So reforms, planning, investments. These are the three, those are the three pillows, pillars that will allow us to be a country that thinks about its futures and tries to make it real, to uh, make it possible. Of course, we need a long-term perspective that goes beyond uh, the term of a single government. Otherwise, we're on the risk that one government will destroy what the previous government created. But we cannot be too naive. Infrastructures are not enough. We need micro-operators. And in order to do this, it's very important that uh, Ferrovie dello Stato, the railway group, um, Act. Uh, actually, they just decided to have railway infrastructure, freight, uh, passenger transport, and urban regeneration. So, having a very strong operator, for example, like Merci Italia, means uh, that we become players in the international arena. This way, our country can be something more than just a physical platform and become an economic platform through which uh, we see the transport not just of goods uh, and uh, passengers but also development a kind of development that is also sustainably uh, sorry environmentally sustainable and socially sustainable thank you thank you thank you minister in a very short time, you were able to give us a very clear picture of the situation. So an evolved kind of platform with a network of connections so that there will be movement of goods and uh, people, but we will also create value. Now the floor to President Agostinelli, who is president of a port authority since 2021. It's a startup in a way. Uh, they, they manage five ports, so the challenge now for the Port Authority, what is it? Well, first of all, I have just eight minutes to summarize seven years of experience. I would like to thank uh, Ms. Aguerri, uh, one of the, the uh, directors, uh, and a thank to the minister in particular. As you see, the minister, after seven and a half years of the Gioia Tauro uh, Port Authority, uh, the minister finally uh, ended uh, the uh, period in which the authority, the Port Authority, had no governance. And we needed that governance. And I would like to thank Minister Giovannini for something else, for his method, his working method, 
the uh, agenda Draghi is uh, a very much debated topic, but nobody talks about the uh, Giovannini agenda, and I can assure you it is very tight. He, um, his working method taught me a lot, and I hope I uh, will not um, regret. Uh, Gioia Tauro in 2019 uh, overcame a very profound uh, crisis with 400 people dismissed. There was an administrative procedure shared with the then government, a procedure that was uh, unprecedented and not followed by a similar procedure. So the, um, the, pers the entity uh, which had the concession uh, was uh, put in doubt, and uh, we have two terminals. The first one is the greatest, the largest container uh, terminal of Europe, and the other one is um, managed overall um, by Grimaldi in in, uh, in its majority. There were investments. The Gioia Tauro port is now um, experiencing a sort of a renaissance period. We have all the features to become relevant when it comes to the uh, transport. Uh, this port was built in the 80s. As uh, the minister said, we have the seabed, we have the depth, we have the primacy in uh, connectivity. Uh, you can see some pictures and some videos uh, of the uh, wonders of this port, which is not so well known. Uh, only a couple of years ago, we um, inaugurated a port uh, railway system. It is true that a feeder ship can um, um, can hold 500 trains, but we uh, lacked the port uh, railway system, and the minister honored us in vis with his visit when the second train was about to uh, leave. We have 900 uh, rail convoys uh, leaving or depart uh, departing or arriving to our ports. Uh, the minister is, of course, right. Uh, uh, one ship is enough to um, hold and to transport um, numerous trains. But uh, our port has all the uh, features, all the best features. Of course, what we lack is the um, inland area. We have the widest inland area in Italy, but I will not dwell on uh, other uh, topics, uh, the lack of development of this special economic space uh, in our area, uh, the fact that we had lots of commissioners. Uh, you just have to know that our main competitor at the Mediterranean area is Tangiers. Uh, and the King Hassan of Morocco, uh, founded only by a signature, the Zesse Morocco with 73,000 employees, and all the European um, entities invest in the port of Tangiers. Um, we will uh, reach three million and a half containers uh, this year, and I believe that the port authority has uh, fully um, carried out its function. But we offer to the national ports system the first example of a northern European port, uh, if you like. Our port is, uh, has all the infrastructure. Uh, we have the uh, railway system. We have perspectives. Uh, we have a future. And above all, it is a port, as President Signorini said yesterday, um, unlike Genoa, um, the Gioia Tauro port is uh, located in the Gioia Tauro plain, and Reggio Calabria um, is 65 kilometers away from the port. So we're not enshrined within a city. We, our mission is that of developing other ports in the Ionian area, Crotone, Vibo Valencia, Marina, um, and Corigliano. Uh, what can we do now? Um, allow me to give you some um, visionary uh, outlook. We have uh, thought about using the Ionian ports. The Corigliano port was built in the 1980s. He receives uh, 75 ships per year, one ship every five days, uh, ships uh, um, carrying um, wooden ships or um, iron dump. This is the traffic of the Crotone port and of the Corigliano port. We are perfectly integrated 
within a design of sustainability, we are now starting um, in-depth study, studies uh, so as to use the quays of these ports uh, for producing uh, uh, turbines that will be then used in the uh, offshore wind mills, as um, the minister anticipated. So the wind blowing constantly in the Calabria, in Calabria region, we imagine the wind as a, a, an option for uh, rescuing um, Calabria. If possible, it could be coupled by a um, a, a, uh, by, um, a company by another facility. So the wind should become a um, an energy basis, uh, as it was, uh, as the. Um, hydroelectric power uh, fed the northern uh, Italian uh, factories. Well, wind could be another fuel for our future. So our Gioia Tauro port is, is like a small Rotterdam and the uh, offshore, la latest generation offshore um, wind uh, energy farm could enable us to create a new industrial supply chain and generate enormous uh, uh, amounts of energy which is perfectly renewable and this could also give an irrepetible opportunity to a territory which is very much in need of a new opportunity. The Corigliano port is a wonderful cathedral in the desert. It is absolutely empty. So it is a strategic issue to me um, to think about uh, a new function when it comes to industry for the uh, Calabria ports. No longer to consider the ports no longer as the, um, according to the parameter of the uh, freight handled in the port, it would be a very uh, arid kind of calculation in Calabria because we have the primacy of the Gioia Tauro um, port with a transshipment. But the, on the other hand, in the other uh, towns such as Corigliano Calabro and Crotone, we have a desert, we have a cathedral in the desert. So we should think about a new industrial function, which means that for each offshore uh, windmill, we could have 200 uh, specialized uh, skilled um, workers and 100 uh, skilled workers when managing the marine uh, wind farm um, located offshore, lasting for 25 years. This is an opportunity for job creation, which is very fascinating, and we are studying this opportunity in depth. Uh, I know I have no more time to talk, and I will leave you with these um, beautiful images. Uh, we have a container holding uh, shapes. So, uh, this is one of the uh, biggest shapes of the Grimaldi lines. They uh, carry um, their carry cars and they uh, arrive to the uh, Gioia Tauro port. And thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much to the um, uh, to Agostinelli, to Mr. Agostinelli, because he explained one of the concepts uh, mentioned by Minister Giovannini earlier when he was talking about specialization, the development of a port um, system, and uh, well, he touched upon a couple of topics, uh, the inland areas, which is a topic which relates to all the Italian ports. We, in the Calabria region, should focus above all on job creation. I followed, I followed what Minister said earlier. Um, he has very, very high expectations. Uh, um, An author, Brodel, wrote about the possibility to integrate cultures, but we have more stringent problems. We have problems related to occupation, to employment, and to, to job creation in Calabria. So the topic of the um, of the inland area is related to the organization of areas which enable you to create a new value, to create added value. And I now leave the floor to Mrs. Tricciulio uh, from Merci Italia in order to understand what Merci Italia is um, doing or thinking about doing. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I will also start from uh, the situation of a country and its features uh, as a hinge uh, between the Mediterranean as a privileged platform with its port system, but also with an equipment uh, which is important when it comes to infrastructure. And um, 
infrastructures are being developed. We should not forget that our country is crossed by four corridors of the TEN-T network. From the point of view of the railway system, it is a sort of a fulcrum of the transport system from north to south, south to north, east to west. And this value can grow, and it can really grow with interconnections and with the port system as well. As Minister said, as the Minister said earlier, um, the port system with its specificity, with its variety, and with the uh, characterizations of all the ports, uh, clearly, a ferrovie um, believes a lot in this, and its plan, the plan of ferrovie. Um, is rooted in the development of the port system in general and the development of uh, railway uh, transport of freight and logistics. Uh, we have a new dedicated organization. We have a logistics pool dedicated only to the development of the uh, share of railway rail transport for freight. Uh, in Italy, we have about 11% of this kind of transport. In our 10-year plan, we aim to double that share and we may divide the actions into three different sets. The first one is evidently reviewing the business models and of course the ability to exploit the infrastructural development but also the process of transformation of a country and working in favor of this transformation and this is the way to relaunch the role of Italy within the European context. Mercitalia is, uh, has an important presence abroad. So evidently, um, we uh, work in Germany, Mercitalia is the third um, transport operator in Germany. So this is a great opportunity. The ability and the possibility to connect uh, the country which will um, hopefully increase uh, the quality of infrastructure is a very important element and we are focusing on this element in our plan. The second item is that of investments. Investments are needed above all for the operators. Match Italia and the Logistics Pool in its 10-year um, program will invest um, billions of euros in renewing the fleet in bearing in mind the green um, uh, the green values and this is a way to um, to gain a competitive advantage and to adjust our standards to the European standards the third item is related to the uh, view of the whole system, the integration between the operators, uh, each of which with its own features and specializations uh, is a great opportunity for us. This is why in our plan, we are focusing on partnership development, uh, the development of agreements uh, and um, visions uh, based on the whole system, which can uh, um, bring development to the whole system. We have been uh, working and we are still working um, in order to conclude agreements with the shipping sector, but evidently a lot of attention is being devoted to the first and last mile infrastructure. And I'm referring not only to ports. Um, we worked a lot in uh, the port of Gioia Tauro and we are working a lot also, thanks to the president of the Port Authority for his attention. And evidently, when it comes to uh, port um, infrastructure and inland infrastructure and the connection between these two uh, areas um, is the completion of the logistics chain. All this is finalized uh, to create value and to um, return competitiveness to a sector which in the long term, thanks to projects and the development of infrastructures, thanks to the um, NRP, uh, will need a great focus on the part of all the operators and stakeholders uh, 
to, um, to take the country towards this new stage of development of infrastructures. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. You gave a very interesting vision. According to what Minister Giovannini said, Mercitalia is almost uh, acting as a system integrator, um, handling but also um, intervening in the gates, uh, creating a physical connection along with the um, connection related to the services. That's exactly what we're doing. This is our role and we are sure that we can interpret this role as best as we can, especially bearing in mind the international um, sphere where we can bring not only uh, the development uh, of our country, but also the development uh, on a more international level. The competitive arena now is the European arena. And with the, shipment, uh, with the shipping sector, we're going to have an even wider dimension. Thank you very much. We now have the uh, contributions by two uh, speakers um, dealing with uh, automotive and um, heavy vehicles. And I'll leave the floor to Mr. Luca, CEO of Toyota Motor Italy, the first um, stakeholder to invest a lot on the first hybrid car. And they are now um, involved in developing the hydrogen vehicles. Mr. Giovannini focused uh, and mentioned uh, the uh, environmental issues. What is the contribution that Toyota is bringing in this direction? Good morning. I hope you can hear me. I apologize for not being here with you today. I had some key words mentioned and I will try to connect them. So interconnection operators and partnership. Let's start with operators so that I can explain our role in this uh, event. I will try to explain what an operator like Toyota can give in terms of contribution to this transformation. And uh, uh, I will talk also about the needs and expectations that an operator like Toyota can have towards the um, Italian government. Italy is going through uh, an energy crisis and, we, we, and Italy is trying to reach the objectives of the 50 to 55 uh, package and also the repower EU plan by the European Commission. Italy is already well positioned. Our rate of renewable energies uh, is quite significant. Uh, um, wind energy, sun-related energy, hydroelectric energy. However, renewable energies have a common feature, and that is they are not always available. So it's very important to have an energy carrier, so to say. And we believe that uh, this kind of role can be played by hydrogen. And that is why for more than 25 years, we have invested on fuel cells. So hydrogen through an electrochemical reaction with oxygen generates electricity power to move everything, cars, for example. And this goes hand in hand with the development of renewable energies. So according to our idea, we need to go beyond zero. This is our claim that you will um, find in our uh, communications. And that means we want to create a society that goes beyond zero, that doesn't simply, uh, is not just satisfied with zero emissions, but aims uh, at something bigger. Um, thinking about the well-being of society, of the society in which it operates. Now, uh, talking about electrification, as it was mentioned before, we have been investing for years in low emission um, products uh, like uh, full hybrid products. 
or plug-in hybrid products. But now the future for us is electric mm, cars and fuel cell electric cars. Uh, because we want zero emissions. So this uh, fuel cell technology is represented by Toyota Mirai. Toyota Mirai has been around since 2014. We have just renewed it in 2021. It can go for 650 kilometers and it takes just five minutes to refuel it. Mirai in Japanese means future, but the future that is already present today. But this is not enough. Cars are just one part of our activity. However, our investment also considers other areas like buses, uh, heavy trucks, uh, trains, ships, uh, forklifts, for example, and uh, uh, power plants. We focused very much on buses, which may seem a very important point. We have a partnership with Caetanobus. Caetanobus is a company producing the buses that you see in airports all over the world. It's a Portuguese uh, company. The manufacturing is in Portugal, and we are developing a Toyota Caetano bus, which is a hydrogen-based bus. This bus will be available in different versions, and the lineup will grow along the years. Now, as for partnership, it's not possible to operate uh, in this field of ecological transition or in the case of any industrial transformation if we don't have partners. So in the future, we think uh, there will be a series of uh, partners. We have an agreement with Daimler, that is Mercedes, for the future production of buses, hydrogen fuel buses. And we're talking with many others because, as I said, this is not a path that you can go along by yourself. And all the initiatives we carried out in Italy, for example, the fueling station, hydrogen fueling station that we just um, opened in Venice, was done through a partnership. So for us, hydrogen and electric, uh, electrically, uh, electrical vehicles are two um, products that need to develop in parallel. Our investments in the electric ve uh, vehicle system has been confirmed. More than 30 models will be launched by 2030. 16 of them are already being developed and will be available next year. However, today we would like to focus on uh, light uh, hydrogen mobility. Right now, the most suitable use of hydrogen is for heavy transport. Collective transport is for us an opportunity. For example, in Paris, by 2024, we will have a taxi service with 600 hydrogen fueled taxis. So, um, and uh, we also have a similar initiative in Copenhagen. Unfortunately, we don't have much time left. Could you please uh, get to a conclusion? 
Yes, okay, I will conclude very rapidly. In this case, we need infrastructure for refueling station. Right now, we only have two uh, distributors, two um, fueling stations for hydrogen, and we need to locate them in places where they can serve several users, uh, buses, ports, uh, highways. A lot has been done so far. We have 40 stations for heavy transport and light transport, according to the National Recovery Plan. But there are decrees that have uh, constraints in terms of use destination. That means that if you want to renew your uh, group of buses and you create a refueling station, that can be used only for refueling buses. So you cannot uh, refuel light vehicles or other uh, heavy uh, vehicles. So this uh, I highlighted uh, the opportunities that we have for the futures and the limitations and obstacles we have to overcome. Thank you, Mr. Luca. I'm very sorry for interrupting you, but we have a very strict deadline. So there is another infrastructural issue now linked to energy transition. Uh, Mr. Biano, please try and be as uh, synthetic as possible. In this case, we're talking about a global operator that deals with uh, vehicles and Brentium vehicles. And so uh, their idea of service is a global one. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be the last one speaking after listening to one of the leaders in the manufacturing system. So I will try and focus on a few points. Least plan was created in the Netherlands. So civilization was born in the Mediterranean and the discovery of uh, uh, America uh, shifted things toward the ocean. I think now we have to go back to the Mediterranean. Our company has carried out a study showing how advanced that the refueling infrastructures is when it comes to electric uh, cars. And uh, Mediterranean countries in Europe are lagging a bit behind. Uh, Spain and Italy are still very far from northern, uh, for the United Kingdom and Northern Europe. We were born in 1963. We manage 150,000 vehicles. We are the only ones who have a global footprint. We have partnerships in Oceania and uh, uh, the Americas. I would like to take this opportunity to say a few things. First, there are great opportunities. We heard about the logistic uh, system. The logistic system requires an industrial system, and uh, the industrial se sector requires services. Our service can bridge this uh, gap because it's a mobility system for people. And today, the, we have contracts of use that allow users to use the service of a car for the time they need. What kind of advantages does this give? Well, the, the sector I represent, uh, I am president of an association of uh, uh, leasing operators. Our contracts are very successful. Um, when it comes to companies, and are becoming more attractive also to individual citizens. As we are moving from uh, fossil fuels towards uh, hybrid. Uh, and then uh, we will move towards hydrogen. Of course, there are a lot of uncertainties, and uh, we are very uh, we like our cars. 
in Italy, uh, cars are on average 12 years old, uh, maybe more when uh, they are vehicles that transport goods. So we know that the age of this kind of vehicles is no longer sustainable because of technological innovation. We know that internal combustion cars will not be sold uh, starting from 2035. Many manufacturers have declared that they want to stop it by 2030. So may people may now think, well, I'm buying a car today that will not have a value in the future. Well, our sector can be the answer. So leasing a car allows you to do something more uh, effective without worrying about the residual value of a second-hand car. And this is linked to the characteristics of the leasing sector in which you go beyond property and you focus on service. We carried out a study together with Bain this year and it shows that cars, especially owned by mm, private citizens, in Italy, but uh, the situation is not very different in Europe, is lower than 5%, whereas uh, leasing companies can make uh, better use of the car. And so there is less risk of an obsolete technology car. And uh, going back to the issue of this meeting, so the Mediterranean situation, we have some good news. Large uh, international operators, even though they are multinational companies, are investing in Italy quite significantly. Our sector is growing in Italy and has been growing also during the 28 to 2012 recession. So on the long term, it's uh, doing well. It suffered during the pandemic uh, crisis, but uh, was able to bounce back. So the national or international players are keep investing. And so now are present not only among companies that seem to like leasing, forms, the so-called asset light forms, but also private, uh, uh, like SMEs, uh, professionals, and private citizens seem to be more, inter more and more interested in this. So even though uh, the economy in the Mediterranean area is, was affected by the um, COVID pandemic. At the same time, uh, the service sector is showing growth rates that sometimes are even higher than uh, Central or Northern Europe. So I just would like to ask uh, the minister one question that is, what is the situation when it comes to the refueling infrastructure and the hydrogen related infrastructure that we saw have a significant allocation of funds and more than 700 millions, but they are in mission three of the national recovery plan. Thank you. Now, I would like to ask the minister to do something very difficult. That is to try in five minutes to draw some conclusions or make some comments. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's go back to infrastructures. We are responsible for the infrastructure along highways. And in a couple of weeks, uh, we should have a clear view of all investments on uh, highways because those are uh, the uh, responsibility of those who manage the highways. 
and that Minister Cingolani is now analyzing um, the situation as far as refueling stations are concerned. We are lagging behind also because national producers for, have kept saying for years that electric cars would never have been the solution. That is why we are lagging behind. Obviously, when it comes to refueling stations for hydrogen, the situation is different. There will be 40 refueling stations um, built. And I took some notes uh, concerning the exclusive use of the infrastructures for local public transport. I only have four more minutes, so I can only share four ideas with you. First of all, Italy as a place where not just goods and uh, people uh, are, but also as a place where we live, one lives and produces. This means uh, that we need to be able to offer a high quality of life without the level of pollution that we see in uh, northern Italy with digital infrastructures that are uh, of high quality. And it means that we need to be in a position to welcome back uh, companies that are coming back to Europe. And having goods travel all over the world uh, in terms of sustainability is not really the best ideas considering the level of emissions that this entails. So transformation will require that we plan things. And this is something that is not uh, second nature to us. The European Union, thanks to the National Recovery Plan, taught us how to do it. And it would be really a shame if we didn't apply this method also to the other financing that I was mentioning before. Uh, without taking advantage of the synergy that was created between the, the central government and the local institutions to try and decide together what to do. Third point is speed. Someone is saying that we have to rethink our national recovery plan. We have very limited implementation time, and we have very limited time because competition is also based on uh, time frames. So we need to have a very clear idea of where we are going, what we are doing tomorrow, not, not next year, because investors need to have certainties. So we need flexibility, we need the reforms that we try to do so that uh, local institutions uh, and railway, uh, the railway sector could uh, plan the financing required. And then one last point, the size of operators. We have too many uh, small operators. We need our manufacturing system to grow just as much as our tourism sector. So we need larger companies, stronger companies that become market leaders. We have important opportunities that we can take, but we need uh, entrepreneurs, businessmen who believe in this. So we need uh, the passion, uh, the same passion that we can read in the title of, our, of this meeting, a passion for Italy. There are a lot of entrepreneurs that are being are accepting this uh, challenge. Others are still looking and waiting. Um, I think uh, if we speed up on the implementation of the national recovery plan, if we can strengthen with the new European funds what we've done so far, I think uh, we will be able to learn how to uh, work so that Italy will be an extraordinary connection hub throughout the Mediterranean. 
Thank you. So the minister already drew some conclusions, so I just would like to conclude by saying that once again, we can see that our country has great potential because of its position, because of its uh, vocation, because of its uh, skills. So we need uh, to make use of those skills. And I think uh, this is a very positive example of so operators who shared with us their view. But we need uh, strategic planning. We need someone who can manage governance in the right way, someone with the planning skills that are required. We hope uh, this will be the case. As you know, the meeting is a unique event uh, with unexpected results. Uh, and we have to remember that a civilization cannot grow without culture. And uh, the meeting has always been a place of culture. Each one of us can give our own contribution to make it possible. Donations can be done only at the specific uh, donation desks uh, throughout the festival uh, buildings. And uh, please bear in mind that if you make a donation for the meeting, this can be uh, deducible in, uh, from your uh, tax returns. Thank you very much to all the speakers and uh, enjoy your evening. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. ci siamo mai fermati. Proprio quando il tempo sembrava immobile, il pensiero si è mosso in un modo diverso. In quell'istante è cambiato tutto. Abbiamo costruito qualcosa che fosse solido abbastanza da sostenere quella leggerezza. Abbiamo trovato il nostro tempo, chi veloce, chi lento. Un tempo umano, un tempo nuovo. Per chi si conosce. Per chi dà una mano. Per chi studia. Per chi lavora. ha bisogno di staccare per tutti noi il treno è sempre il treno
Immagina un mondo migliore. Un mondo dove le auto emettono solo acqua. Un mondo senza più incidenti. Un mondo dove zero è solo l'inizio. Immagina un mondo beyond zero. Quella per farti spazio in città. What's next? Per quando a cambiare il tuo lavoro. What's next? O semplicemente per guardare avanti. What's next? Vai su lisplan.com e scopri il noleggio a lungo termine più adatto a te. Lisplan. What's next?